Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the 18 electron rule in organometallic compound. Before moving to the 18 electron rule, let us go back to the octet rule. The stability of S and P block compound is determined using the octet rule, which refers to the tendency of atom to prefer 8 electron in the valence shell. That is, the sum of its N ns electron and NP electron must be equal to 8. This is how they will achieve the same electronic configuration as the noble gas in the period. For example, sodium chloride. The electronic configuration of sodium ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, whereas the electronic configuration of chloride ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. Both of the ion in sodium chloride contain 8 electrons in the valence shell and hence acquired a stable noble gas configuration. In a similar way, the stability of organometallic compound can be determined using the 18 electron rule. It involves NS2, N-1, D10, NP6 electronic configuration, which helps in determining the stability of transitions metal based organometallic compound. It is stated that the stable complex is obtained when the sum of the metal D electron the electron donated by the ligand and the overall charge of the complex is 18. This is how the metal will achieve the same electronic configuration as the noble gas in the period. In 3D transitions metal, the number of electron in 4p is 0. So the valence electron would depend on 4s and 3d electron. However, before complex formation, all the 4s electron are transferred to the 3d orbital in its excited state and then only the metal undergoes hybridization so we can say the valence electron depends only on the d electron consider the example of hexamine cobaltate ion the atomic number of cobalt is 27 so the electronic configuration of its valence shell is 3d7 4s2 the oxidation state of cobalt in this complex is plus 3, thus there are 6 valence electron. Also, each ammonia ligand will also donate 2 electrons, so overall 12 electron from 6 ligand. Consequently, the total valence electron in this complex are 18, that means the complex follow the 18 electron rule and is stable. Okay, one can easily calculate the valence electron count of the metal ion. But the problem arises in finding the electron count of the ligand. There are so many ligands, some are neutral while some are negative in charge. They also differ in the type of electron used in the bond formation with metals. Here I have tabulated the electron count of various ligand. The nitrogen and phosphorus atom in amine and phosphine ligand use their lone pair of electron in the bond formation with the metal so they donate two electron the electron count in hydrogen and nitrogen diatomic molecule is also two as both the atom of their molecule are involved in the bond formation with the metal carbonyl cyanide and alkene use their pi electron in the bond formation with the metal so they also donate two electron Alkyl is a flexible ligand which can donate either 4 or 2 electron depending on the complex requirement to show stability. Nitrosyl can donate either 1 or 3 electron depending on the nature of the metal. The band structure nitrosyl which carry a negative charge is 1 electron donor while the linear structure nitrosyl which carry a positive charge is a 3 electron donor. It is experimentally observed that the transitions metal from 3D series form a complex with linear structure nitrosyl. On the other hand, the transitions metal from 5D series form a complex with band structure nitrosyl. So based on the nature of transitions metal, we can predict the electron count of nitrosyl ligand. Ligands such as halogen, hydrogen, alkyl, acyl and amide used a sigma electron only during bond formation with metal thus they are one electron donor 
अलाइल साइक्लोपेंटाडाइनाइल बेंजीन कैन बी अ सिंगल इलेक्ट्रॉन डोनर और मल्टी इलेक्ट्रॉन डोनर डिपेंडिंग अपॉन वेदर दे वेदर डी लोकलाइज इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑफ द साइक्लिक रिंग आर इन्वॉल्व इन बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन विद मेटल और नॉट Now, let me illustrate some more example. Hexa-sinoferrite iron. The atomic number of iron is twenty-six, so the electronic configuration of its valence shell is three d six four s two. The oxidation state of iron in this complex is plus two. Thus, there are six valence electron. Also, each cyanide iron will donate two electrons. So, overall, twelve electron from the six ligand. consequently the total valence electron count in this complex are 18 that means this complex follow 18 electron rule and is stable nickel tetrakis phosphorus fluoride the atomic number of nickel is 28 so the electronic configuration of its valence shell is 3d8 4s2 the oxidation state of nickel in this complex is 0 thus there are 10 valence electron Also, each trifluorophosphine ligand will donate two electron. So, overall, eight electron from the four ligand. Consequently, the total valence electron count in this complex are eighteen. That means the complex follow eighteen electron rule and is stable. Hexacarbonyl manganese ion. The atomic number of manganese is twenty-five. So, the electronic configuration of its valence shell is three d five four s two. The oxidation state of manganese in this complex is plus one, so six electron from the manganese and twelve electron from six carbonyl. Thus, overall eighteen electrons. So this complex is stable. In this complex, the oxidation state of manganese is minus one, so eight electron from manganese and ten electron from five carbonyl. Thus, overall, eighteen electron. This complex also follow eighteen electron rule and is stable. Triphenyl phosphine iron tetracarbonyl. The oxidation state of iron in this complex is zero, and both triphenyl phosphine and carbonyl are two electron donor. So, eight electron from iron, two from triphenyl phosphine, and eight from four carbonyl. Thus, overall, eighteen electron. This complex follow eighteen electron rule and is stable. In this complex, the oxidation state of manganese is zero. Methyl ligand is one electron donor, so seven electron from manganese, one from methyl, and ten from five carbonyl. Thus, overall, eighteen electron make this complex stable. in this complex we have three different ligand and all of them are neutral thus the oxidation state of chromium is zero ethyl ligand is one electron donor so six electron from chromium one from ethyl five from cyclopentadienyl and six from three carbonyl thus overall 18 electron so it is a stable compound the oxidation state of manganese in this complex is plus 1 So six electron from manganese, two from ethene, and ten from five carbonyl. Thus, overall eighteen electron. It is a stable complex. The oxidation state of cobalt in this complex is zero. So seven from cobalt, four from cyclobutadiene, and five from cyclopentadienyl. Thus, overall eighteen electron. It is also follow eighteen electron rule and is stable. In this complex, we have both one and five electron donor cyclopentadienyl. Also, the oxidation state of iron is zero, so six electron from iron, four from two carbonyl, one from sigma cyclopentadienyl, and five from pi cyclopentadienyl. Thus, overall eighteen electron, which make this complex stable. The oxidation state of vanadium in this complex is zero, so five electron from vanadium, six from three carbonyl, and five from cyclopentadienyl. Thus, the sum of these electron is sixteen. 
as we know an alkyne is a flexible ligand that can donate either four or two electrons depending on the complex requirement to show stability therefore here in this complex alkyne will act as two electron donor to make this complex stable in this complex nitrosyl is bonded with transition metal from 3d series that is nickel hence it must be linear structure nitrosyl which is a three electron donor thus 10 electron from nickel three from linear nitrosyl and five from pi cyclopentadienyl thus overall 18 electron which make this complex stable i hope you now you all understood and predict whether the following complexes follow 18 electron rule thanks for watching see you in the next video of this series